Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down below in the comments section using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Without further ado, Alex. Right. First question this first week. First one is from Rob Estelle. They say, can you use mountings for mechanical disc brakes to upgrade to hydraulic to save buying a new bike? Yeah, for sure, of course you can. Um, mountings on the frame are gonna be in a similar sort of place. There is a slight chance you might need to use a different disc brake adapter because many road hydraulic calipers are flat mount. Yeah. But there's loads of different brackets and adapters out there to pretty much make everything compatible with every type of disc brake bike. Yeah. Hmm, simple. Um, next question is from Rob Liver, who says, seems like road bikes are getting wider and wider tire clearance. Without the need for rim brakes, is there any reason why they don't just go super wide, like 38 millimeter clearance, and just let people put on whatever they want in there? Is it just aesthetics, other than a few grams of weight? I don't see why not. Um, well, this one, I think it, it is about weight. Um, yeah. And it is about finding that balance of sort of weight and aerodynamics on road bikes. They have a different role to play than just a bike that would need 38 mil tires. Well, there's comfort to take into account as well. Just general speed, I think you're, you've got to decide which characteristic or which selection of characteristics are most important to you and then choose your tire base from that. But I think it's probably fair to say that generally if people are using a road bike, it's because the speed that they can ride at is towards the top of their list of priorities. Otherwise, yeah. you could just use a gravel bike, a cyclocross bike, an Audaxi touring style bike, and then fit wider tires to that. Yeah, and as you make something wider at the front, that's not just the tire that's getting wider, it's the fork and the everything, everything. is getting wider. You're increasing the front layer, yeah. You're making it less aero. Yeah. yeah. Um, so well, you'd yeah. end up with a situation of a fat bike where it's got cranks which are like this far apart. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Well, Rob Liver can go buy a fat bike if he so desires. Yeah. Uh, next question is from AJM, who says, how do you pack and travel with a bike that has an integrated headset, particularly in a bike bag which requires the handlebars to be removed and rotated sideways? Thank you. Um, practice, practice, practice. Like anything, um, do it before the night when you're due to go on holiday because there's nothing worse than being like, oh, I've got to leave to go to the airport in two hours and I haven't packed my bike yet. Mm. But I think if you're careful when you take everything apart and pack it very delicately with lots of padding in strategic places and you really have to make sure that the radius of the bend on the hydraulic hoses isn't um, too steep because then you could risk putting a kink into the hose. Yeah. Um, a couple of little hacks I have for this are if you have a separate bar and stem, mm -hmm. then that's quite good because I will take the bars off at the stem plate yeah. and then I will loosen the stem bolts mm -hmm. so that I can rotate the stem round, but I keep the headset and the stem in place. That is a good tip. And that way, you just then rotate the stem back into position as you need it, you put the bars onto the end of the stem plate. But by keeping the stem in place and all the spaces, your headset shouldn't need any adjustment, like it's holding yeah. everything where it needs to be. It gets a little bit more difficult if you've got an integrated bar and stem, because often you have to remove yeah. the bar and stem, and in, in it's a one piece. What um, you then do if you're not wanting to change your headset bearings or have your fork sort of fall yeah. out, um, and have to mess around with that. What you can do is actually get um, spacers. Yeah. So you would still, you'd put some spacers on the steerer tube in place of where the, yeah. the stem went and then put your top cap on um, to hold everything in place and then that'll like keep everything compressed together and it'll stop the fork sliding out and the bearings unseating and everything. Oh, good advice. Yeah, I like that. Next question in is from Arta. They say, hi team, after reading a lot of information about the advantages of the new Wahoo Speedplay, I decided to buy a single-sided power meter. Cool. To my surprise, despite following the instructions, I'm practically unable to clip into the pedals. I get in maybe one out of 10 times, currently using them to ride indoors, but dread to think what happens when I go outside. Can we recommend any solutions? Thanks in advance. Well, this is actually a problem I've seen a number of different people have when they've got brand new cleats and brand new pedals. They can be a little bit tricky to, to clip into, mm. especially if you're transferring from a different pedal system because the technique is very slightly different to the pedal systems where you sort of clip in at the front and then push your heel down. Mm. 
as the cleats sort of bed in and wear in slightly, the tension will get a bit easier. Yeah, I think this is a thing that's on the cleat itself. Yeah. Uh, it's quite common that when you get a fresh set of um, speed play cleats, they can be a bit stiff and yeah. difficult to clip into. They do ease up over time. And if you look in the instructions, um, Speedplay do suggest you can apply some lube to the cleat spring, yeah. and they have a list of lubes that they would suggest you use. Usually, it's a drip-on type yeah. lube, but try doing that, and um, should be fine. Like it is normal for them to be a bit stiffer when you first get them. One other thing, I'm not sure if these are still available actually, but there used to be a light action cleat that was mm. available online, which had a slightly lower spring tension on it, so that might be really helpful. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, Thomas G next. Hi, tech people. If you had two 12-speed Shimano cassettes, one 105 level and one Ultegra with Hyperglide Plus for indoor and outdoor use, which one would you put on the turbo and which one on the wheels? Easy. No sort of question about it for me. Yeah. Ultegra one on the wheels that I use outside because 100%. if it's got the Hyperglide Plus technology, that it's literally designed to help improve the shifting when you're outdoors, maybe the bike's under load, climbing, sprinting. So then if- Plus you... weight doesn't matter indoors. Yeah, I think to get the best out of the slightly more expensive cassette, you're gonna to wanna to use it outdoors. Yeah. Simple. Um, Leonard Fairground is next. Yeah. He says, how fast do you think a continuous line of track cyclists <laughs> with minimal gaps could cycle around a velodrome, given no single rider would be pushing the air? I don't know, 60k an hour plus. I, I, I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? So what is what if if you're struggling to visualise this? Just a continual loop of cyclists. And going then no around one's around. on the front. Yeah, no one's on the front. That I mean, if we can An ever broken loop. If we can ever make that video, I'm gonna do it. So if we can get the okay to do it, shall we make Let's it? Let's just find. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only way to find out if we ever get to make this video is by subscribing to GCN Tech. I think maybe. Mm. Well, the Olympics is happening in Paris, isn't it? Mm. There's going to be a lot of really good cyclists in the velodrome at one time. Yeah. We could just ask them if they got five minutes. At the Olympics? Yeah, just to just to like yeah. make this video. <laughs> Probably the easiest way of going about it actually, to get all of the world's best athletes to do like a funny video for us mm. just before the sort of pinnacle of their sporting career. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, I see the logic behind it. What's the last <laughs> question this week? Um, it's from DSM1891. They say, can I reuse latex inner tubes? This summer, this summer, where I ride more frequently and do the odd event, I switched to latex inner tubes. But as autumn came, and I've gone out less frequently, I've switched back to butyl inner tubes because pumping up my tires was another excuse not to ride. Dreaming of summer again, and wondering, is it safe to reuse the latex inner tubes next summer? Yeah. Yeah. Why, why wouldn't it be? I, 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 I'm slightly baffled as to why it wouldn't be okay. Maybe he's worried that they might be degrading over time. Yeah. Well, they probably would be degrading if they were left out in the sun and the rain. Mm. Uh, yeah, okay, so I think it's fair to say when they're outside of a tyre, like you're storing them, latex inner tubes can be a little bit more delicate than a standard butyl one, mm. but put them in a little bag or the box that they came in originally, store them safe, they'll be good to go. Don't waste your money on new ones unless you really need to. Simple. Um, yeah, hope that's been really helpful for everybody. Once again, sorry we didn't get to your question, but be persistent, keep commenting it in the comment section down below, and who knows, maybe next week could be a lucky week. Yeah, mm, right. love you. Bye. See ya.